Good morning guys. It's been a hot minute. Um, today I wanted to bring you along through the day, kind of share what I've been up to and kind of what happened where I've been. Um, Joseph fell and he tore like three ligaments in his ankle. It's been like a six week recovery nightmare. Um, and so just work life balance has been a little bit crazy. Just keeping up with like a family of six plus work plus meals, let alone cleaning. Like it's been a lot, which today's video is sponsored by Green Chef and like that helps me out a lot with meals. But I wanna give you guys an update today. Right now where I'm sitting is actually at the new land that we're gonna be growing on for 2022. Um, and my seedling racks for the cut flower garden, I've got two of them, they are busting at the seam. So I'm gonna give you guys a tour of that. So I mentioned last year that we were gonna be farming or that we had the potential to grow on a friend of mine's property that has an Airbnb. And he's got this space in the back. He's like, if you clear it, you can use it. So we are gonna be growing out basically half of the flower farm here. Um, I'll put up some, some pictures on the screen of what it looked like before we got all this snow. <laughs> um, but we cleared the area, we put down some landscape fabric. Like I've been burning holes and planting cool season annuals. And then, midway through april i don't even know how this happened but this like arctic blast um it's been crazy and there's like i don't know we'll have to go out there i'm gonna take you guys out to the field but i think like maybe a foot of snow on top of my poor baby plants so we're gonna go out and check on those now so i know this will be hard to orient um, but we put up an electric fence because there is deer here so this is about from that t-post all the way down to here it's about a hundred I think it's about a hundred feet and then from this corner it's a big square that corner over all the way to here I want to say maybe 150 maybe probably 150 feet so I've got this area open for dahlias and then from here this is where I've got my landscape fabric it goes all the way and it's a large square and that's where I'm starting to plant plants we're gonna walk over see how my lisianthus how deep they are oh this is just terrible okay i know they're about right here oh this poor baby <laughs> i do know that snow can kind of protect them almost like a blanket but they really shouldn't freeze oh my goodness this whole row here there's hundreds <laughs> Lysianthus planted. Okay, I just walked down here. Ranunculus. They are not supposed to freeze. Well, the ground is still, you know, it's not like hard frozen. The ground is still moving. I'm hoping that this snow is acting like a blanket because there's about 200 of those <laughs> planted in here all the way up this row. I got a scarf on my head. I'm gonna head back to the car. Oh, I am freezing now. So what I have next on the agenda, since there's really nothing I can do for these plants at this point, I really wish that I had put low tunnels over them, but it's too late. What I need to do now though, is go to the collective and drop off our egg orders for the week. I wanna show you guys these real quick before we get there and drop them off, but our eggs are looking so cute. You guys have probably seen these a bunch if you've been following for a while but I I don't think I'll ever really get over like the blue and green eggs it's just so neat so we'll drop these off and then I'll meet you guys back at the house and you can see how much snow we have there because it's even warm so I'm back home I don't know if you guys can see out the window so you it'll adjust here Look at how much <laughs> came down in the past couple days. It's just crazy. Like, I don't even know where all this came from. So I was able to cut a couple branches from some flowering trees over there on the property. And I wanted to just get these in the water real quick. Just give them a nice angled cut. I love flowering, like any kind of blossom. <sighs> so pretty. I. I can imagine once our house is done, like once the addition is done, I wanna plant some beautiful like flowering, maybe like a mock orange or like a cherry tree. 
and I think that would be so pretty like maybe like five of them along the driveway wouldn't that be so cool and a lot of them I would probably cut and use <laughs> you know as the season comes on like I'm always looking for stuff that I can use with like tulips and daffodil and for me you know doing market bouquets that's essential like you need something to go along with them I mean you can do just straight tulip bunches but I feel like a lot of people see those as just like like what's the difference between locally grown tulips and the grocery store you know even though my you know my tulips most of them actually I think I think all of them this year actually are double tulips so they do look different but um you know some grocery stores have double tulips now so I really like to make sure that they not only you know that they were grown without pesticides and they're beautiful but also um you know they need to look different like visually different there we go make sure all these stems can get nice and hydrated i might actually do an arrangement a little bit later today with some of this because i think it would look really cute i just got some new compotes um, for a wedding that i'm doing this summer let me show you guys those oh, isn't it cute it's got like a little bit of a dusty pink undertone and then the white washing on it it's a little bit larger um, than i normally use for a compote but for you know larger tables i think this will be perfect for what we're using it for and just to give you a size reference so there's this this is typically the size this is just a spent bouquet that i've got here it's the poor flowers are completely out of water but this is the size of what i normally use let's put them side by side see how much bigger that is just it's mainly like the opening so the height doesn't make a difference but how wide this is here it's going to require a lot more flowers and just want to make sure I'm getting my stem counts right. So proud of myself. I'm on my second thing of water of the day and I'm gonna have lunch before noon. So which thing should I make? Actually I made this one so two days ago, two nights ago, I made this creamy paprika shrimp. This was so good and I find like with these meal kits. Now if you guys have heard me talk about HelloFresh before, Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh. So if you liked one, you'll like the other. I like them both just the same. So, okay, what I'm debating on today is cranberry barbecue pork chops, or should I do the chicken, Mediterranean chicken? I think I'm gonna do the pork chops. So what I do, once I've picked the picture, I'm literally picking it like it was on Pinterest. Then I just go and I grab out the coordinating meat, the coordinating pack, open it up, see what you got, and just get right into it. Like I literally saved myself 30 minutes. You know you do it too. 30 minutes of trying to decide what am I gonna have for lunch. Green Chef is a CCOF certified organic company with options for every lifestyle. Keto and paleo, vegan, gluten-free, vegetarian, fast and fit, and Mediterranean. They give you the flexibility to switch options whenever you're ready to try something new. And Green Chef saves so much time by helping with meal planning, grocery shopping, and most of the prep week after week, so you don't have to. Green Chef makes cooking easy with step-by-step -step instructions, chef tips, and photos to guide you as you follow recipes. And it makes cooking easy, so you can spend less time stressing and more time enjoying delicious home-cooked meals. Sometimes me and the kids will do the cooking together, but honestly, on a busy weeknight, I save anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour just by having the meal easy to choose and all ready to cook. Use my code NaturallyBrittany130 to get $130 off plus free shipping on your first box. Go to greenchef.com for more details. This is so good and it's such a simple meal like pork chop with barbecue sauce and cranberries who would have thought of that combination brussels sprouts and onions and then we've got fresh mashed potatoes like rosemary eat good food like your body needs it you deserve it and don't forget to drink your water <laughs> so i took a good like 15 minutes to sit down enjoy my food um, and I was snooping around on the weather. It looks like it's not supposed to get below 29 degrees tonight or tomorrow night. So I think before I pick the kids up from school, I do have enough time. We can run over there and uncover some of those seedlings. And then hopefully this 
the whole snow incident won't set them back too far. I think I'm hoping <laughs> that we'll rebound and we will have a crop this year. And I think if I just do a little work today, just spend 30 minutes, uncover what I can, um, I think we're gonna save them and I don't think they need to be covered with the Agrabond. So yeah, but before we leave, um, I wanna show you guys what I have on my seedling grow racks because like I said in the beginning, uh, they are just full, completely full. Anywhere I could plant anything, like I have it planted. So it's like my whole farm, like anything I haven't already got in the ground, that's the whole farm up there. So let me show you what we have going. I've got my two racks here this one and this one and they are just full of color and life and yeah I'm gonna put pictures up on the screen so you guys can see like what the you know potential is here look at that light it's so not even <laughs> um, and I get most of my seeds from Johnny's seeds so I'm gonna be using their photos just their stock um, you know their photos on the site but that is where the majority of their them are from and I would highly recommend them um, I'm not affiliated at all but I just buy a lot of their seeds as you can tell okay so let's start off up here these are my soil blocks and I do two different types of planting so I have trays with soil blocks these I water just by like pouring water here and then they soak it all up and then I've got trays which are just like divided like you'd kind of see at a garden center. They sell these now at like hardware stores. You can get, you know, it's got the bottom and then divides. And this means that there's 50 or like this one, there's 72 in here. Um, yeah, and these guys, either I overhead water them with like a shower head or you can also bottom water. So like filling the bottom and letting them soak it up and then dumping it out and yeah. Okay, so soil blocks, each one is a little block. Here's a plant roots isn't that insane it's like a I think it's called magic lime it'll be my first time growing this variety but the soil blocks it's one little block per plant and when I use the blocker like the press it makes 20 at a time so 20 40 60 80 a lot in a small space and then behind those I've got my stock I'm so happy with like how healthy these guys are they're just like sturdy and they're loving life. These guys are about three, four weeks old at this point. Stock smells amazing. It's one of my faves for uh, market bouquets especially because you can say, hey, you smell this and people smell it and they're like, oh my gosh, I've never even heard of stock. These ones here, these are some uh, Gonfrino. We've got Audrey White Strawberry Fields in the middle, which is a cool red, almost looks like a strawberry, and then the QIS Pink had some really spotty germination on that, um, the strawberry one. Although I'm not too worried about having too many plants because they do put off a lot of blooms. Over here, this is a really, really mixed up tray. These guys are about three weeks old and I've got two random tomato plants that didn't fit. I've got some champagne bubbles poppies. These guys are so fun. They did so well up here last year. I've got some lace flower. I've got a whole bunch of snapdragons. This is my second or third succession and it's a mix. So yeah, a lot there. I've got some random lemon basil. This stuff smells like fruity pebbles, it's so cool. And then in the back, I think these guys are angry with me. These are mignonette and they're starting to turn red. I don't know, I don't know what's happening with them. I think they need to be bumped up into trays get a little bit more you know soil space and then these are like the freshest of the fresh I've got some yarrow here and I've got I think this is the Colorado mix and it looks like 20 40 60 80 120 of yarrow um and then back here I've got my pink forget-me-nots so they are doing great little babies down here these are some pro cut gold light sunflowers these guys are about 10 days old maybe a little less actually they might be eight days old doing really really well the only reason that I'm planting these now is to get a jump on the season um, I was gonna try and put them out just a little bit early because they can tolerate a little bit of cool weather um, 
<laughs> but obviously we'll have to we'll have to be touch and go with that. These are some zinnias. They're the queen lime reds. These are queen like any of them. Any of the queen colors are so cool. They're like I want to call them more like chunky, but they're just the color is like so two toned and so pretty. These are some basil, my cinnamon basil. It's are great for filler. First year flower farming, you will learn you did not plant enough filler. Just always. Back here, I've got some asters. And now I started mixing trays. So I've got asters here. These are the king, what are they called? King apricot. They're really pretty. And then in the front here, these are a different variety, but they're the Matsumoto apricot asters. And then these ones that look totally different are some Orlea. Because I had some that didn't germinate in this tray, and like because I'm so limited on space and the lights, um, you know, I've got a lot of space, but because I've boxed myself in, I needed to maximize. So any of these that were like, if I had an open one here, an open one here, I just moved these plants to condense them all in one spot, and then I filled in the extras with, you know, like some of these little soil blocks once they needed to be moved up. Down here, I've got some Lysianthus. I believe these guys are Coralie Pink. These germinated so differently, it was crazy. Like, see the size difference between this one here and then, do you see that? Can you even see that one? It looks like a tiny pebble right there. Like, the tiniest of tiny, but I just don't have the heart. These guys take like 12 weeks just to get like this big. <laughs> Um, anyways, I don't have the heart to get rid of them, but I just bumped them up recently. I'm hoping in the next week we'll see if these guys are going to progress or not. And then this guy should get like way bigger, just probably in a week having extra room going from a soil block to this, it'll probably increase in size like 20% each week. Back here, I've got some Zensha, Zensia, I don't know how to pronounce it. Beautiful Cosmos. It's like a burgundy red. I've got some Sweet Annie. This is such a nice filler. It's crazy because they already smell like it. So strange. And then I've got some so pretty. These are like my favorite zinnias. They're the Zenderella Peach. And we had some spotty germination there. So that's why I filled the rest of the tray in with that. Again, spotty germination. These are the Afternoon White Cosmos. Um, they almost look like Dr. Seuss trees, don't you think? So I've got those. I love those for floral design. Any kind of like bouquet I'm doing, I love having the white cosmos. It just adds like a little dancing flower. It's so pretty. And then these shorties, these are my eucalyptus. And they are doing fabulous now that we bumped them up. Again, like these should be, you know, increasing in size. Probably with these like 10-15% each week. This tray here is 50 tomato plants and I've got a big range here. So we've got the pink Berkeley tie dye, Moskvich, I've got Oregon spring, Verona, and then the little ones. So sun gold and um, pink bumblebee, lots of tomatoes. And I'm excited to hopefully succeed with these this year um, by planting them at that other property. I'm gonna have to tuck all these back in. I can't do it one handed. They're just like sticking out. <laughs> Okay, down here we have got some chocolate Queen Anne's lace, regular Queen Anne's lace, and then these are some Celosia. It's the pink flamingo. They almost look like peppers to me when they're first germinating, but I love those. They last a long time in the vase. Another kind of Celosia, these guys are almost fluorescent. My first time growing this variety, it's the Selway red Celosia. Isn't that crazy? Like the stalk of it is red but very like hardy plants. I'm happy about how, they're, how they've been looking. These are some Sweet Annie, and then I've got some more Zenderella, but these are the Lilac Zinnias. I've also got the Champion White Campanula in some soil blocks, and then these are the um, Selway White Celosia. These guys could use a, a bump up too. Behind them, I've got a whole bunch of dahlia tubers that I have potted up. And if you can see here, we're starting to get some little, um, some little sprouties coming off. And basically what I do with those, here's some more. These two are the ones I potted up first. I ordered new dahlias this year and I'm wanting to increase my stock. 
And the best way to do that, like when a tuber costs between six and I don't know, $30, um, that's expensive. So like, for, you know, that cost for each one of these is a lot. But if you pot it up and you get um, a sprout on it, you can cut that off and root it. And, you know, it's taking cuttings. So you're creating a new plant with each of these little sprouts. So you can really increase your tuber stock really quickly. This one here, um, Valley Rust Bucket. Look at all these, all of these little sprouts. As long as the tuber has an eye, um, it'll make a sprout. And you can get, I don't know, six to eight cuttings off of each tuber before you plant it out in the field and then still use it out in the field. Um, I need to do those cuttings today, they're ready. And then once you have them cut, these right here are some cuttings that I have rooting. I just dip them in rooting hormone, pull off the outer leaves, stick it into some soil. Um, oh gosh, <laughs> sorry buddy. <laughs> Um, stick it on a heat mat and then in about 10 days you're gonna have some roots so these guys are already rooted pretty well over here I've got some lace flower and then behind those these are some calendula and then beyond those oh, these are the zeolite calendula and then beyond those these are looks like gomfrina I don't have a label on here though so I'm not sure which type over here, more Orlea, that beautiful white lacy flower. And then we've got a bunch of Seeker White status. So basically, if you've been wondering where I've been, I've been here <laughs> planting seeds <laughs> and watering them. Uh, no, I mean, this whole work-life balance thing, it's, it's hard, you know? Like balancing your family, like your kids, plus your spouse, plus your time plus you know you like your spiritual routine plus your like physical routine like working out trying to eat healthy all of the things like just as humans you know not even i don't even want to say as moms because i know it's as much a struggle for like literally every person on this earth to just like get by in the times that we're living in right now it's it's a constant like reevaluation and trying to decide what you're gonna do, you know, long term, but then also making choices to like chip away at the. <sighs> it's a, it's a struggle, <laughs> but I'm really enjoying, you know, I'm I'm really enjoying planting and just like building up this anticipation for the upcoming year, um, for the bouquets that I'm gonna be building for. All the flowers, like I love. I love being able to do something that's like tangible and tactile and it's the best. I've got a tray here. These are some straw flowers. Let's see what color. These are the apricot peach. A whole tray of 20, 40, 60, 80. I think it's like 280 straw flower plants here. I need to pot these up because as you can see, let's see if I can get this on the camera. Can you see how many roots are just getting bound there on the bottom? I was hoping to be planting these out like this week and with the current situation that's not going to work and ideally I'd like to be able to just wait like two weeks because of even if I plant them out next week if I can pot them up this week into some actual trays it'll give the roots a little bit of time and give me a little bit of of space before they're like dying you know you don't want to let your plants get root bound because it really sets them back so I'm probably going to pot up half of those into cell trays today and um, that'll kind of give them the best health. Okay, I hope you guys aren't getting too bored, but hopefully the flower pictures are helping. Um, I've got more celosia up here. I think this is, these are the pompous plume. I've got some Benary's giant rose zinnias and then these are the sunbow, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it, zinnias. I've got the Apricot Lemonade Cosmos. These guys I got from, from Florette. And I believe, oh, I think these guys are the same. And then back there, I've got the Zensha, those burgundy ones. And then they germinated terribly for me. So I filled this in. Um, like I've got some that just came up now. So what they look like when they're first popping before they get this like furry tree thing. They look like that. Um, and then I put some fever few to just kind of fill in the tray potted those up over here I'm terrified for these guys because of the weather we've been having um, I was hoping to be planting this these out in the next two to three weeks, but 
uh, they are getting huge. Like this one here, <laughs> like there's some flower buds wanting to happen. I might have to go ahead and put these into some of these, um, some of these bigger pots because like some of the ones the dahlia tubers are in just so that they can get good roots and not be totally root bound. They don't even really like their roots to be messed with, honestly. But I've got the Casparita. These are like tiny, cute white pumpkins. I've got a whole, so they're kind of in lines. Like these are the white pumpkins um, and there's five in the row. And then these are cantaloupe. Then I've got some watermelon. I always love how watermelon, like see that little, the first true leaf on there is so cute. So when you look at a seedling, let's geek out. Uh, you've got your cot leaves, cotyledons. They're the first leaves. So when it's in the seed, like it pushes out of its seed with these two leaves. And then the first true leaf is that one because that's how the leaves are going to look. A lot of times the cot leaves don't even look at all like the plant. Then I've got a kombucha squash, kombucha. I've got some cucumbers. I have got... These guys here are the patty pan squash, those little cute yellow ones. Over here, I've got some like yellow zucchini squash. And then over there, actually it looks like I only had one, two, three, four of my green zucchinis. I mean, four zucchini plants can actually go quite a ways just for a family. So I'm hoping that'll be enough. I might, I might last second start another tray <laughs> just in case. And then we've got some more king size apricots, uh, apricot asters. We've got some Benary's giant zinnias, the lime, and then the salmon rose. More zinnias. Which ones are these? Oh, it's the lily put, lily poo mix. I've got some flamingo feather celosia here. And then beyond those, I've got some gomfrina. I don't know which ones those are. I've got some Mrs. Burns lemon basil. These are so pretty. And then more zinnias. This one's called a candy mix. Um, I thought these would be really fun. A nice thing about zinnias too, you don't have to start them in seed trays, but it does give you a little bit of a jump. And I prefer kind of the assurance of knowing that I have like I've got stuff, it's going into the ground, there are plants there. So I'll do like half from trays and then half direct sowing. But it gives me, you know, if the birds come in and they eat all my seeds, at least I have these guys in and like they're in their spots and they're growing. And if worse comes to worse with one of the, the varieties, like, you know, even if these all got frost, burnt and died, we'd still be okay. We can still plant out seeds in the ground. So it kind of covers both bases. These are actually from, these are pinched tops. I pinched the tops off of my other snapdragons. And then I took these tops, put them in rooting hormone, and then stuck them in the dirt. And so these are all, let's see if I can show you. They're basically rooted cuttings. So you can see them starting to pop, pop through here. That's how you know you did a good job. <laughs> they are making it. But it basically doubles your plants. Um, I mean, more than doubles, because when you pinch a plant, then... You take the top off and instead of putting up one single flower stem, one flower spike, it actually puts out like six spikes. And then this top that I pinched off because I rooted it, that can become its own plant and we can do it again. These here are, oh wow, these have grown a lot. These are the um, Phlox, Dulce de Leche Phlox. They germinated so well, 72 of those, my goodness. Um, and then over here, these are another type of phlox. It's the cherry caramel. These guys took a little bit longer to get going. Over here, I've got my third succession of snapdragons. These just came from soil blocks and I'm experimenting with putting them in these tiny um, 128 trays. The cells are so tiny. And then I have those alongside my Iceland poppies. I don't know, I don't like 128 trays. They're just so hard in this kind of environment, like not in a greenhouse, they're so hard to keep watered. They dry out really quick. Okay, two more. We've got the Status. This is the Florette Sunset Mix. I had kind of some spotty germination here, so I might need to move these around and, and add some things to the trays, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, all five of those look like they're empty. That one here, like there's a lot of 
empty spaces. So that's why I condense and combine trays a lot of times. And sometimes I avoid that by putting two seeds in each cell, but it doesn't always, it doesn't always work out. But on things that normally germinate good for me, like status, um, I wasn't expecting that. So I only put one seed per cell and then <sighs> it's hard to win. Okay. And then the last one here, I have got my Rudbeckia. I've got a lot of them already planted out in the garden because they are cool season annuals. Um, but here I've got, let's see, cherry brandy. Oh, it's Sahara Rudbeckia. I love these. They're cut and come again. So yeah, that is basically the cut flower farm for 2022. <laughs> I hope you guys can see like the potential here, at least with some of the photos included. You know, when I look at like, I look at this little pumpkin seedling and I just think of a bucket full of these mini pumpkins and like these cosmos, I just see armfuls and like buckets and buckets of blooms and just the potential is endless. Like it's amazing. So before I pick up the kids from school, I decided to come back to our secondary farm plot and it's not snowing anymore. We just got snow blowing off the trees and a little bit of rain. Anyway, so I scraped off some of the snow. I'll go over and show you. Um, I scraped off some of the snow on the Lysianthus and the Ranunculus and a little bit on the, off the Snapdragons. And I think they're gonna make it. The ones that look the worst are definitely the Lysianthus. And I'm still kind of working on clearing those off. Let me show you. So what I'm doing is basically like how you'd make a snowman. You know, you take a ball and you kind of roll it. <laughs> which is time consuming, but I mean I've got... I bought plugs for these guys. Which means like I bought plant starts. So you know, I've got a few hundred dollars just in this... Just in Lysianthus alone in this spot. Maybe that's an exaggeration. Maybe I have a hundred and about a hundred, hundred and twenty dollars. So I'm just going like that, rolling it like a snowball, and it's grabbing the snow off of them. And then I'm just gonna kind of leave these on the pathways here. So yeah, I'm gonna uncover the Lysianthus. They go down to about there. <laughs> I've also got to check the weather because if it's supposed to snow more tonight or be like way below freezing like if it's 32 34 i can leave these uncovered but if it's going to be lower than that then i'm definitely going to need to put down some frost cloth which i have some here but um, i'll need to weigh it down it's like a whole process and then they might get too hot during the day in the sun it might cook them so that's kind of where i'm at just got to decide which which risk i want to take <laughs> If the camera is picking it up but I can definitely see the heat of the Sun like heating up the black fabric and then kind of like the moisture coming out of the the fabric into the air so I can tell that it's warming up I think it's gonna warm up today this is definitely one of those sites to flower farming that is it's the farming part it's all weather dependent <laughs> and it's like it's trial and error it's trying to make the best of the weather circumstance that you have like I'm out here with my knees in the snow, digging <laughs> snow off my my beds that I've already planted. Should have been good to go according to the weather. I don't know, I still love it though. This bed here has got some yarrow. Some yarrow here I uncovered along this whole bed. And then I've got a blank space about here because I had some more yarrow that wasn't quite ready to plant out. So that's just bare ground. And then this, I uncovered all of the ranunculus and they look really sad. Not as sad as the Lysianthus, this is probably the best looking one. And the positive thing is I can see that this ground here is not like frozen solid. So I'm very, very hopeful for the corms. Um, I, I hope that these, <laughs> I hope that they'll perk up today. Some of them don't look very good. Some of them look really squished. And I can see on the leaves of some of them, almost like there's some cell damage, like on the plant cells. See how it's almost like, yeah, I see that. It's like black spotting from where it looks like it's frozen within the cells. So probably damaged, but 
if the roots are still good and we've still got enough green growth up here, you know, for it to photosynthesize and, and feed the roots, then we'll have new shoots and it could be, we could, you know, we could still have a crop this year. I hope. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Me and the kids are gonna do a little bit of sledding <laughs> and it's actually turning out to be quite the like beautiful blue sky day um, and we're gonna make the most of it. So I hope you enjoyed. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you'd like to see some of my summer garden videos like our flower farm in the height of summer, harvesting, arranging, I will put some videos up in the cards here so you can check those out. See you soon.